Ahoy there! Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you need to know about the various different systems and gameplay mechanics in Eve Echoes. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at integrated rigs, so by the end of this video, you should understand what integrated rigs do and what all the numbers and stats mean on their info page. You should understand where to source the BPs and materials to actually manufacture these yourself. You should know how to construct them and fit them to your ship, and to understand when and why to best use them to benefit the particular ship that you're looking to fly. Now, these are not a cheap system. This is very much an endgame isk sync system, so please do bear that in mind before we proceed any further. If you enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting a like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding the notification bell, make sure that you select all notifications so that you never miss an upload, and of course, if you do want to go the extra mile to support this channel, we have a Patreon page and a Redbubble merchandise store. All that said and done then, let's jump right in to talking about integrated rigs. Perhaps the most direct way to try and explain what an integrated rig actually is, is to describe it as a single rig that is made up of multiple combined other rigs, although admittedly at slightly reduced effectiveness. In short, if you've ever wanted to put multiple rigs into a single rig slot, this is the system that will allow you to do so. Like standard rigs, integrated rigs are subdivided into both your combat rigs, which are things like your weapon rigs, your shield armor and hull rigs, and your drone rigs, and then your engineering rigs, the square ones that are things like your warp core optimizers, your auxiliary thrusters, your capacitor control circuits, that kind of thing. These are then further subdivided into 2P, 3P, and 4P, which are then further subdivided into frequency reducing, universal, and enhance. Now, I'm aware that there's a lot of different terms and names there to throw at you. I promise they will make sense in a moment. The best thing, I think, is to jump in and actually have a look at the stats of one of these so we can start explaining where that name comes from based on the basic information. So let's start off with a frequency reducing 2P combat integrated module. Now here you can see there are four stats listed pertinent to this particular module, starting at the top with integration efficiency. This is the percentage of the attribute of the integrated rig that will actually work. So if you were to fit in, for example, a cannon collision accelerator that was going to give you 10% additional cannon damage, only 60% of that 10% will actually work. Uh, go if you math that out, 60% uh, of 10% is of course 6%, so that cannon collision accelerator would give you a 6% increase to your cannon damage rather than the 10% that the rig on its own would give. This, of course, is because you are going to be able to fit multiple different rigs into this one slot. You can't just stack them up to make them better than the original thing. That would be frankly insane. The second stat is integrated. This is the number of different rigs that can be combined. So for example, going back to that cannon collision accelerator, this one here requires, this frequency reducing 2P combat integrated module has two different rigs that can be fitted into it. That means if you put a cannon collision accelerator on one side, you cannot put a cannon collision accelerator on the other side. It must be a completely different rig type. You could put a cannon collision accelerator one side and a cannon burst aerator on the other side for example, and you would get the 60% effect of each of those rigs combined into this one integrated rig. Finally, then, the third one is multiplier of rigs needed. This is the amount of each type of rig that must be consumed in the process of creating this module. So using that previous example, if you wanted to make a frequency reducing 2P combat integrated module out of a cannon collision accelerator and a cannon burst aerator, you are going to need two cannon collision accelerator rigs and two cannon burst aerator rigs in order to actually fit them in here. This gives you an actual consumption cost. And please be aware that any rigs used in the creation of an integrated rig are destroyed. You cannot reprocess these or repackage them and get those rigs back. Once you put the rig into the integrated module, that is it. It is destroyed. It is also absolutely worth taking the moment at this time to say that the rigs used are also not covered by insurance. If your ship is destroyed with integrated rigs fitted, then you can get the integrated rig structure back, but not the actual rigs that were put into its construction. 
Again, you can repackage integrated rigs as well, but you will only get the structure, not the rigs used. The actual rigs, the cannon collision accelerator, the burst aerator, etc., will be destroyed when this is created, and there is no way to get those back. So looking at the name, Frequency Reducing 2P Combat Integrated Module, obviously the combat suggests that you can only put combat rigs in here, the 2P is in regards to the integrated, um, you can only fit two rigs in this and it's two different rigs, and the frequency reducing is a reference to both the integration efficiency of 60% and the multiplier of rigs needed being two. All frequency reducing integrated modules are 60% efficiency with two multiplier rigs. So if we now go up to a universal 2P combat integrated module, as before, being a 2P combat integrated module means it has that integrated of two, meaning it uses two different rigs um, to be combined together into the one module. This time around though, because it's universal, that is at a 70% efficiency. So that cannon collision accelerator that was going to give us 10% cannon damage is now going to give us 7% cannon damage instead of the previous 6% on the frequency reducing. You will however notice that a universal integrated module requires four of each rigs. So in the previous example where we wanted to put a cannon burst aerator and a cannon collision accelerator in, you're going to need four collision accelerators and four burst aerators in order to build this module. The third and final of the 2P is the Enhance 2P Combat Integrated Module. Again, it's a 2P integrated module, so it has two integrated, two different rigs can be combined together. The Enhance, however, means that you will get 80% of that attribute working, but you require six of each of those rigs. That means to build one Enhanced 2P Combat Integrated Module, you would need six cannon uh, aerators and six cannon collision accelerators. That's a lot of rigs to make one slot. So, we should now have an idea of what's going to happen when we look at the frequency reducing 3P combat integrated module. That's right, it's a frequency reducing, so it's 60%, and it requires three of each of the rigs um, to be used. It then has an integrated three, meaning that there are three different rigs that can be combined together into this one. So this time around, you could have a cannon collision accelerator, a cannon burst aerator, and say a shield field, uh, the shield extender things like that, put into that there, because it's now three integrated. Once we go up to universal three, again, you'll see that it is an integration efficiency of 70% because it's a universal, it's three integrated rigs because it's a 3P combat integrated module, and you will need six of each rigs in order to fit this together. Finally then, we have the frequency reducing 4P combat integrated module. This being a frequency reducing only has 60% integration efficiency, it integrates four different rigs into the one module, but you do need four of each of those rigs to make this work. So if you wanted to put, for example, in there an anti-EM, an anti-thermal, a cannon burst aerator, and a cannon collision, a cannon collision accelerator, you're going to need four of each of those rigs for a total of 16 rigs being combined into the one slot. Now, you may notice that only the enhancing one only exists at 2p, the universal only exists at 3p and 2p, and the 4p only gets frequency reducing. And this is the same when we look at the engineering ones as well, so again, you should have a vague idea of exactly what this is going to say now, I'm not going to linger on these. If we were to look at a frequency reducing 2p engineering integrated module, again, it's frequency reducing, 60% efficiency, it's a 2p, so it integrates two rigs, and it needs two of each of those rigs to make this work and this is all exactly the same as the combat ones just obviously using those square engineering rigs and um, to fit in there instead before we talk about how to actually construct integrated rig modules and fit them to your ship, I think it's worth spending a bit of time talking about how to actually source them for yourself, other than buying them off the market, because as a new system, they tend to sell for an awful lot early on, and can be found relatively easy and built relatively cheaply. To find the blueprints, you will need to go and scan down relic sites. Inside relic sites, if you use your relic analyzer, you will be able to locate the blueprints for integrated rigs. You can find both combat and engineering across New Eden in all kinds of relic sites. Literally, the easiest boxes to open, debris, do contain them. As you can see on screen here, this is me inside an angel relic site, and the angel debris, I've opened it up, and there is a 2P combat integrated rig module blueprint there ready for construction. So go scanning relic sites and you will find the blueprints, or if you've got friends who are doing relic sites, buy the blueprints off them before they go to market. 
Once you have the blueprints, however, you'll need to actually construct them yourself, and this is done using blue salvage. There's all kinds of different types of blue salvage. Again, these are found in data sites, so you'll need to scan down data sites and hack into these in order to get that blue salvage. Here you can see a capacitor control center in a Serpentis info shard. This, any of these sort of bits of scrap that have a blue glow to them are what are used in the construction of integrated rigs. You'll find these again all across New Eden in all five of the pirate factions in high sec, low sec, and null sec. And the blue salvage does drop across the board in all of those just as the rig modules do drop across the board as well. So that's where you find the rigs, that's where you find the salvage that you use to build these integrated rigs. How do you actually construct one of these and fit it to your ship? Here you can see that I've got a hanger full of rigs that I've been hard at work collecting in order to showcase how this works. No, that's a complete and utter lie. Of course, I'm on Fulmination, which allows me to just create these out by typing in a code and brings them up so I can demonstrate. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is to showcase how actually constructing one of these works and how to navigate those menus. And we're going to start with a frequency reducing two phase combat integrated module. So you just give it a single tap. And on the menu here on the right hand side, underneath move to, we have integration. Tap this and it will open up the integrated rigs menu. Now at the bottom, first things first, I want to draw your attention to the little toggle here of only display enough rigs. Now because this is a frequency reducing 2P combat integrated module, it has that whole multiplier of rigs needed of two, the amount of each type of rig that must be consumed in the process being two. So by having that box ticked, it only shows me rigs that I actually have sufficient of in order to be part of this process. If I untick that, you'll see that I have a cannon and bit extension there, um, but I only have one. And obviously there are two required, so no matter what I do, I cannot fit that into this rig. So you may as well leave that on, but if you've got that ticked and you can't see which rig, uh, can't see a rig that you want to fit, that's why. It's because you've got this ticked and you don't have enough of that particular rig in order to construct the integrated rig module. Now, being a 2P combat integrated module, we put two different types of combat rigs into it to get the combined effect. Now here you can see I've got cannon collision accelerator ones and cannon burst aerator ones. The damage bonus of a cannon collision accelerator is normally 12.5%, but remember, when we put this into an integrated rig, we are only getting that integration efficiency, in this case, being a frequency reducing combat integrated module, um, of 60%. So when I put that in, you'll see that that 12.5% gets dropped down to 7.5%, and it shows that quite clearly at the bottom. It tells us that the ship attribute correction is 60%, so we're only getting 60% of that uh, rig's effectiveness when we put it in. It also tells us it's going to consume two of these rigs. And if I bring that one back out, you'll see I've got 49 to start with. When I put it in, it goes down to 47. Then, if we put the cannon burst aerator in on the right hand side, you'll see again that minus 7.5% activation time adjustment becomes a minus 4.5% activation adjustment. Um, if I just take that one out, again it's worth pointing out that you cannot put two cannon collision accelerators in there, cannot fuse rigs with the same attributes. That does mean you cannot put a cannon collision accelerator 3 and a cannon collision accelerator 2. They might technically be different rigs, but they use the same attributes, therefore they cannot be combined. So we're going to put a cannon collision accelerator and a cannon burst aerator. That gives us the, the bottom here, rather than um, one rig slot being either the damage bonus of 12.5 or the attribution time, uh, the activation time adjustment of minus 7.5, it'll be one rig slot that gives us a 7.5% damage bonus and a 4.5% reduction in activation time. Then we just tap on start integration and it will give us a warning here, confirm integration. This operation is irreversible and the integrated rigs cannot be restored. Insurance will not be able to restore integrated rigs. After repackaging, only the structure of integrated rigs will remain, continue. Again, basically, this means that the rigs that we are using, these cannon collision accelerators and the cannon burst aerators in this example, are going to be consumed and destroyed, and there is no physical way of getting those rigs back. If the ship is destroyed and you use insurance points to bring it back, you will only get the frequency reducing two phase combat integrated module, it will not have any rigs in it. I hope I make that clear. We're going to hit confirm and move through, and this will then give us a nice little flashy graphic that shows the construction of the rig. Boom, there it is. Frequency reducing 2P combat integrated module with a damage bonus of 7.5% and an activation time of minus 4.5%. 
Now, it's appeared here in the hangar as well. It's right next to where we were. It's unpackaged, of course, and we would have to repackage it if we want to sell it, and we would lose the rigs in it if we do so. Now, if we long press on it, you can see which integrated rigs are actually inside it. Cannon Collision Accelerator 1, Cannon Burst Aerator 1. And you fit these to a ship the exact same way that you would fit any other rig. You just go to the fitting menu, change it across to rigs, and put that into the combat rigs, and it'll just take up one slot to give you those bonuses. Now let's have a look at one of the 3Ps here. I'm going to go for the, uh, the universal 3P engineering. We're going to go integration here. And you see this time around, because it's a 3P, it can use three different rigs. It's got that integrated three, meaning the three different rigs can be combined. I've got dynamic fuel valves, I've got auxiliary thrusters, and I've got polycarbon engine housings. Now we're going to put each of these in, one by one, noticing that it consumes six of the rigs, as the uh, in basic info told us it would. And uh, as it says here, ship attribute correction 70%, rigs consumed six of each, and it is six of each. So that's con uh, consuming six of the dynamic fuel valves, six auxiliary thrusters, and six polycarbon engine housings. What that is going to give us is one rig at the end that has a 7% reduction to inertia modifier, a 7% increase to flight velocity adjustment, and a 14% reduction to the capacitor required to run an afterburner or micro warp drive. Pretty cool, right? Again, we're going to hit start integration. We're going to get the warning that that's all there. But if we put it all together, we're going to get that nice flashy graphic as our engineering integrated rig is put together. And this time around, if I long press on it again, you'll see all three of those rigs are then combined together. So that's how we make them. I wanted to take a bit of time at the end of this video to demonstrate how this actually works in effect and to talk about which types of these integrated rigs might be most beneficial for the particular ship that you're flying. And I want to first of all give a live demonstration here with a Slasher 2 Interceptor. In my main slots, all this has is three Gisti C-type small autocannons in the high slots, and then I gave it the standard DPS rig setup of one collision accelerator and two burst aerators. That gives us a total DPS here of 303.5, one cannon collision accelerator one and two cannon collision burst aer uh, cannon burst aerator ones gives us a DPS of 303.5. I wanted to know what would happen, though, if I took three frequency-reducing 2P integrated combat rigs and put in a Collision Accelerator 1 and a Burst Aerator 1 into each of those, like you saw me build earlier in this video. If I built three of those and fitted them to the ship, what's actually going to happen? It actually gives us a DPS drop. We go from 303.5 down to 302.61. There is no benefit to this. It's cost us 12 rigs to do this, and we have gone down in our DPS. This is because not only are each of those collision accelerators and burst aerators getting only 60% of their efficiency, but we're also getting the stacking penalty across the board here, which results in an actual net loss in DPS. This means if your rig setup only uses two different types of rigs, then the frequency reducing 2P are absolutely useless to you. They are going to make your ship worse and they're going to cost a lot of isk in order to do it. What, though, happens if we take a look at a three universal 2P integrated combat rigs, each with a single co uh, collision accelerator 1 and a burst aerator 1 in? Three of those combined actually gives us a DPS increase here of 313.31. We've gone up there by about 10 DPS. It's not particularly much, and consider the fact that that has cost us 24 rigs in order to do so, creating those, um, those universal 2P co integrated combat rigs has cost us 24 of the, uh, of the rigs there, 12 burst aerators and 12 collision accelerators in order to produce, but it does give us an increase of 313.31. This means that if, again, you are only using two particular types of rigs, then you're going to need to have at least the universal ones to get a benefit overall, and we'll come back to that thought later. I then wanted to just take this one final step, and what happened if we used an enhanced 2P integrated rig? Again, each of these enhanced has one collision accelerator 1 and one burst aerator 1 in them, and there are three of them fitted to the ship. That cost me 36 rigs to produce. That gives us another DPS increase up to 324.36. Now, again, 
I would honestly say this is not a humongous increase. We've gone up a total of basically about 10 and a half DPS, and it's cost 36 rigs in order to do so. 18 collision accelerators, 18 burst aerators, plus the actual, uh, the three actual uh, integrated rig modules themselves in order to do this. That is not a cheap upgrade, but it is a rather large DPS boost, sort of percentage wise. Whether or not that's going to be worth the cost is up to you. These integrated rigs are a min-maxes dream. If you really want to, like, squeeze out the final drops of DPS and damaging capability that a particular ship can do, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to want those, like, C-types, B-types, A-types, and X-types, and then using the integrated rigs as well. Remembering that if this ship dies, I will not get any of those collision accelerators or burst aerators back, but I would get the actual integrated rig modules back. I'd just have to put rigs back in them again, which is expensive. It means that losing that ship is actually going to cost me a lot more than just the insurance points. I expect rig prices are not going to go down anytime soon is the point I'm trying to make yet. So, the point then remains, if it is a DPS loss to use three of those frequency-reducing 2P integrated rigs, when would you actually use them? Well, you're going to want to do so only if your ship would normally want three or four combat rigs, preferably four combat rigs. So if, for example, you're looking at a ship and saying to yourself, I really, really need, for example, anti-electromagnetic, anti-thermal screen uh, reinforcers, and I need the cannon burst aerator and the collision accelerator, then you can rig accordingly to that and you will get a slight increase across the board. I honestly don't rate the 2P frequency reducing all that much. It is such a specific ship that actually needs them that I don't see them selling particularly well. Once you go up to the second type though, the Universal 2P, these are going to be pretty good for many. They are probably the best bang for your buck. I think that the uh, the Enhance 2P are obviously the bigger boost, you know, you're getting more DPS out of them, more functionality out of them, but they also are going to cost you an awful lot more, both in terms of the actual rig itself and in terms of the ISK, etc., uh, the actual rigs that are going to be consumed in the process of making one. That in itself, I think, is going to mean that the 2P, uh, the 2P Universal are going to be the best bang for your buck. However, what about the 3P rigs? The ones that have, like, three different rig types in them. Well, here again, the frequency reducing ones, the 3 times 60 are okay. They're not terrible. They will give a slight boost across the board, but again, the three times 70 are going to be the excellent ones. Imagine, for example, you've got a ship that is particularly capacitor unstable. You then put your capacitor control circuit and your capacitor upgrade rigs into that uh, that universal um, the universal 3P. That is then going to use your two slots. Your third slot can then be something like warp core optimizers or auxiliary thrusters. You are getting a net increase and you're getting some better stats in there as well. The 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 two times seventy, the two univer two p universal are going to be great on engineering for cap unstable ships because you can put both the cap boosting rigs in there and get that nice boost. But the three. The three Ps are absolutely awesome because not only are they going to give you that net increase across the board there, they're also going to give you something you wouldn't have otherwise had, like warp stability or some scanning resolution or, you know, all these kinds of different things that you can add on there. On the subject of engineering rigs, though, unfortunately, I do think that the 4P, uh, the 4P engineering ones, the frequency reducing 4P engineering integrated rigs, are going to be practically useless, as I cannot think of a single industrial ship um, that, or an anything actually that really wants four different engineering rigs. There's nothing out there that really benefits particularly well from having four engineering rigs, different types. I could be wrong. You might have your own personal opinions in the comment section down below. Please do let me know. I want the comment section on this video. Video to be some excellent examples of where people have found stuff that really works. I want it to be a library where people can come and actually have a look through those comments and go, that's really cool. Has someone else done something with my ship? What works? Put it in the comment section if you've done something and it worked. Once we get to those 3P universal engineering, though, as I said, they're awesome. They allow things like your capacitor boost plus having all of the thrusters, etc., on them. 
Now, please do be aware, this is an incredibly expensive system. Not only are you going to need to actually buy the integrated rig modules themselves or go out and find them, but you do consume a lot of rigs in the process of making these. This is end game min maxing. Like having B type, A type, and X type loot, these rigs are a way for you to minimize and maximize your ship to its fullest potential but it is going to hurt if you lose that ship since all of the rigs used are lost. You will only get the actual modules back. You will then have to get more rigs and fit them into it. It's not a cheap way of doing things, but it can get some pretty wild effects. And I'm excited to see all of the different fits and that that people come up with. Again, please let me know in the comment section down below what you find and what works for you. Anyway, folks, thank you ever so much for watching this one right the way to the end. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.